like that. Look, look, over there. Over there. What is that? Crikey. Let's take a closer look. I can't believe it. Out in the wild. Out in the wild. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's a CMF. What's cracking, everyone? My name is Ryan, AKA Skeeb23, and this is my audio and tech channel. All right, today is finally the day, everyone. I get to tell you all about the ZMF Atrium, my impressions and my experience with it so far. First of all, I'd like to go over the technical specifications and talk to you a little bit about the build and comfort. So we're gonna jump right in and tell you right off the bat that the Atrium does retail in for $24.99. Now that is a hefty price, I understand that. And that is the base price. That is before any options that you wanna put in, any kind of customization things, uh, whether you want the different cup colors, they've got the summer cup colors going on right now from uh, ZMF. So again, $24.99 is where the Atrium starts. So the atrium is gonna be weighing in right at 490 grams. Now that's give or take 30, depending on you do the magnesium or the aluminum. Um, it is 300 ohms, and then it's uh, 96 dB per milliwatt for the sensitivity. So it is a more difficult to drive headphone. Um, you know, in fact, we'll get into that a little bit later with power options, but I will tell you that Zach, you know, on his videos, he does tell you that you really wanna try out ZMF with plenty of different amp options. Uh, plenty of different sources, which I will get into that because if you guys have watched this channel, you know that I don't have a whole lot of, you know, amp source options as of yet. All right, so as far as building comfort goes, so ZMF is special here, guys. I mean, this is a handmade headphone. It is, you know, not made to order, but you order and it gets made, if that makes sense. So when you get a ZMF, you know that you're getting that full, you know, attention to care on your personal headphone that you order. And this one was no different. Uh, so the cups are all wood. Uh, this one is the aged cherry uh, option that I got. Um, everything is handcrafted on them. Everything is fine tuned before they send them out to you. Uh, but there's a lot of moving parts on a atrium headphone that you're gonna kind of see as I'm popping it up on the video for you. But basically the build is solid. And I don't just say that because it's solid wood, but I mean solid and isn't the fact that, uh, you know, these just feel good to the touch. Uh, you know, pictures, video that you're seeing here, none of that does it justice to actually seeing an atrium or seeing a ZMF in person. As far as comfort goes, this was interesting to me because when I first got the atrium, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little worried. Put them on my head, within a half hour I had a headache, um, actually a pretty bad headache to where I had to take them off. And then I immediately jumped onto ZMF to kind of look up, you know, comfort issues and that kind of thing. Lo and behold, you know, Zach had a video out about bending the headband. And yes, that is a thing to do with his ZMF headphones. They are made to fit a, I guess, universal head shape. I've got a big round head. So for me, it was a little kind of more V on the head than it was, you know, round, if that makes sense. So, you know, when I actually got them out and bent them right, put them back on comfort wise, Perfect. I mean, honestly, I have not had a single issue since learning how to bend the headband. So I definitely, you know, would recommend you guys doing that should you get a ZMF uh, and it doesn't fit you right. Give it some time, give it a bend. Um, there's different kind of ways that you can do that to make it form fit your head. So yeah, you know, I find these not to be fatiguing at all. Um, I've worn them for quite a bit of time now already to get the sound impression out to you. And I can tell you that uh, they are very comfortable, no issues at all when it comes to that. So. Pad swapping is another thing. Uh, ZMF encourages it just because they do give you the option of a few different pads. This personal one that I have here um, came with the universal pads. And then I also wanted to get the, um, these are actually the Autour pads because I wanted to get something with a little warmer of a signature when I like to swap out. And then I got a second set of the universal pads. So you get two sets of whatever the standard is that you get. And then this option, uh, they are all the lambskin. Uh, I did not want to go the route of, you know, the uh, vegan suede, I think is what it is. Obviously, if you know, if that's a big deal to you, you can choose to do that. But I want to go with the lambskin because that is more of the, you know, staple ZMF sound on the pads. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into sound. And I might be kind of all over the place on sound on this one because really I just kind of want to talk to you guys about how the ZMF sounded to me or 
sorry, how the atrium sounded to me. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about the universal pads because uh, that's what they came with. I didn't wanna swap out from them. So that is what I listened to first. The first thing I can tell you, if I typically, you know, start my review, typically with uh, the low end of things, I will tell you bass wise, the atrium, it has bass, it doesn't extend very low. And that was a bit of a, I, I don't wanna say a shocker, just, you know, I wasn't really expecting one way or the other on how that was gonna sound. And when it didn't extend low, I kinda of thought, well, are these gonna end up being bright? More on that in a minute. So I listened to some tracks, uh, you know, my typical, you know, gambit of things that I kinda of run head, headphones through uh, when I listen for things. So when I wanted to listen for bass, I threw on my bass heavy tracks. So the first one I threw on was one I've started to really use with my reviews and that is uh, gonna be Chameleon by Trent Moeller again. And no, these did not extend, you know, there was, you could tell the bass was there, but you didn't feel it. It didn't give you that kind of, you know, sense like uh, maybe my Focal Radiance would or, you know, any other kind of bass heavy headphone in the, you know, extension load down there. I didn't get that from the atrium, that's fine. Uh, the rest of the track, the rest of the sounds came out beautifully in the atrium, so, you know, obviously no issue there. But I would say, you know, if we wanna talk about bass, it's just, it's there, it's just not, you know, in your chest there, at least with my power sources, which again, I'm gonna get to that. So then, I'm gonna skip over the mid-range for a second here, I'm gonna talk about some of the treble things, because honestly, you know, when you don't have that low-end bass, you kinda worry, is this gonna peak on the other side? It does not. Uh, the atrium sounds really, really, you know, solid on treble. Just to give you some examples here. So Mr. Blue Sky, I love that song. It's kind of a fun one. I started using to test my headphones just because, you know, you get that uh, really, you know, nice stage throughout the mix, the different vocal ranges and things. And then all of a sudden at the very end, towards the end of the track, you get that orchestral music that really kicks in. And that's where your treble can be noticed, obviously, on some of those high-end instruments. And you know, this sounded beautiful on the atrium, which uh, I was very you know, pleased to hear that. Then I wanted to test out some sibilance. So I went ahead and went with Wolves by Selena Gomez because that is a very sibilant song. I honestly think just the recording is just too sibilant in general because uh, even on the atrium, you know, I picked up that sibilance. I mean, I don't know how you couldn't unless you just had a completely dark tuned headphone. But on the flip side of that, it's not a, you know, Bayer dynamic sibilance to where it was just too much and I had to flip it off. I mean, I actually could listen through it perfectly fine. So I tuned into some other sibilant type tracks that I have. And again, you know, the atrium seemed to handle them just fine, you know, went toe for toe, not an issue at all with uh, treble and the sibilance. And then I would say for, you know, the cymbals and splashes of things and, you know, a lot of that, you know, air and peakiness of the treble. They sounded very, very good with the atrium. The atrium's timbre is very good. So I mean, you know, instruments just sound natural, uh, which was very pleasing to hear. And just, you know, again, just a pleasing listen for the atrium when it came to the treble range. So kind of with that out of the way, we're gonna talk about mid-range. And to me, atrium equals mid-range equals love. I mean, this headphone sounds, you know, incredible on the mid-range. I mean, we're talking about a lot of parts of music in general is gonna live in the mid-range. If you think about frequency response, if you think about vocals, uh, if you think about all the different instruments, guitars, drums, things like that. I mean, they live in the mids. The atrium just, you know, a, it, it's such a good accomplishment uh, to be able to handle the mids the way it does. You do get that, you know, that punchiness, uh, you get, Somewhat of a slam. Uh, again, I, I think of slam more in that bass level, but you do get it on the atrium um, at times in the mids. It just lives for that. So, you know, plenty of vocal focused music sounded fantastic. Um, Adele was very charming to listen to. Nora Jones, again, very charming to listen to. Agnes Oval, love her songs. Again, very, very good to listen to. And then male vocalists, you know, one that I like to sample is Johnny Cash Hurt. I think he does a fantastic rendition of that. Uh, that was beautiful to listen to. And then some uh, Chris Cornell, uh, some of his tracks there. I sound repetitive saying this, but just, you know, great for vocals. It is in your ear, but it's not like pushed way forward either. So you're gonna get that balance of the track. Uh, and you know, to kind of go along with the balance, you know, the atrium, if you go to their site, you know, they talk about the atrium being very neutral 
and I know sometimes neutral can sound boring, guys, but neutral here is just good, great, uh, pleasant. You know, I so many words to describe neutral here in a positive way on how this sounds that, you know, I would just, you know, sit there, take my notes on listening to the atrium and just letting the music play. And, you know, I would sit there an hour later and I'm like, I've just been listening to music, taking notes. And, you know, every once in a while something will pop up and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Or, you know, make me want to flip to a track and try to, you know, pinpoint different things out. Because it doesn't have the bass, you might be thinking hip hop's a no go for the atrium. I, I'm i gonna have to argue with that one. It depends what kind of hip hop you like, you like to listen to. If you're into hip hop just listening to the beat, sure, you know, maybe you'll want something else that's got a little more bass. But for me, I like Lyricist. Uh, Kendrick Lamar's newest album sounded really, really good with the atrium and it just made me listen to him and his lyrics more than any other headphone I have right now. And that was pretty cool. Um, I was able to listen to that album. I've, I think I've listened to it three times now in the atrium and I keep going back to it just because, you know, again, love the lyrics of the album. The atrium does it for me on that and just, you know, is fantastic. And then another track, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. You know, I know this is kind of a famous song to discuss about a bad recording no matter where you go to look for it, but it sounded awesome on the atrium. I got that stage. Uh, you know, the vocals just popping in and out, left and right, you know, all the different sections of the song, and then the chorus booming in, and just, it just sounded awesome on the atrium again in that mid-range. Billy Ellish, uh, the song Bad Guy. Uh, now, that one, I know I talked about bass not being present, but that one does have that bass line that's there that's in the, you know, really the low end of the mid-range, so that sounded really, really good on the atrium, and I've never heard that song quite like that as I did on the atrium and the fact that, you know, it almost sounds like, and I get it, it's the effects on her voice, but it almost sounds like there's two people talking at once or talking, singing at once um, at some parts and, you know, those whispers in your ear just bouncing around and it was just, it was a cool experience to listen to on the atrium. Thankfully, I like the song, so I have no problem playing that and listening to it. Uh, but again, another very, very cool experience. Uh, Frank Sinatra, another good one for mid-range testing. Uh, you know, jazz music, anything I want to throw at the atrium just sounded great. And I guess it should for the price, but you know, that, that's up to the person, but it sounded great. Now I can't uh, leave, you know, the sound section without talking about gaming because I'm a gamer. Uh, this is a audio and tech channel. I'll be getting to some gaming things at some point. So I did of course game with the atrium because you know, when I'm not listening to music or doing reviews, I'm gaming. I'm playing right now Ark Survival Evolved again. I've got way too many hours into that game. Something with dinosaurs, I don't know. But I played one of the newest maps on there and you know, just kind of running around uh, with my friends and I'm like, do you guys hear that? Or do you guys hear that? Or hey, that came from over there. And they're kind of laughing at me like, dude, we get it, you got new headphones. No, I'm like, no, seriously, you just don't hear this stuff the way I do. You know, it wasn't a bragging type thing. It's just cool. It's a cool experience. That's what this hobby is about is an experience. That's what I feel like ZMF is about, is getting this experience, and especially the atrium. So anyways, just sounded fantastic in gaming. Imaging was very pinpoint in that game. Tried out Battlefield 2042. Yeah, I know it's uh, not exactly popular in the gaming world right now, but hey, who cares? You know, I love shooters and that type of thing, and you know, definitely could pinpoint sounds coming from that. Soundtrack's a little, not the soundtrack, but the sound in general is a little different with this Battlefield, so. Uh, you know, you can play it a little louder on the atrium, but again, just sounded fantastic. You know, mid-range again, this is where it benefits. If you're a gamer and you're going to play with the atrium and you're going to listen to that, you're not going to have bass drowning out footsteps. You're going to be able to hear things very crisp and know where they're coming from. So I did do the pad swap on the atriums and I went to the auteur pads. Now, when I went to the auteur pads, um, it is stated that it's supposed to give it a warmer sound signature. Now, the warmer sound signature is not necessarily on the low end, maybe just slightly, but what I really found was on the high end of things, it kind of tamed that a little bit more, and it was more of that smooth, you know, mellow listen that you kind of get, and I actually love the auteur pads on it right now, um, so I'm gonna be, you know, sticking with these for a little while. That's what's on this atrium currently is the auteur pads. Swapping them out took a couple of minutes to watch a YouTube video of Zach showing how to do that. You know, the auteur pads, yes, thumbs up. Great recommendation from Zach. He actually told me 
uh, this was the other pads he recommended getting along with Universal. And right now I'm loving the Auteur pads very much so. And one other thing too, is I didn't really show you guys what this looked like on my head, unless I'm gonna pop some B-roll uh, because I'm still doing some B-roll. But Atrium sits perfectly fine on my head there. That's how it is from side to side. And this is a gorgeous looking headphone on my melon of a head. I think. All right, so power wise guys, you if you watch my channel, you know that I have the Jotunheim 2 and the Modius uh, for the shit stack. It is a, about a $700 setup when you, you know, count the cables and things that you need to build that. And it powers the Atrium perfectly fine. If you know shit products at all, if you know the Jotunheim 2 at all, you know it has plenty of power for a lot of different headphones out there. Powers the Atrium just fine on whether it's single-ended or balanced. I did find that I don't prefer either or one or the other. Uh, they sound great on both. Uh, Single-ended, of course, I can get more volume play just because there's less power to it. So I got to crank it up more. Somewhere between that 12 to two range typically is where it's going to rest for me on single-ended. I did try to flip the high gain, which I haven't done with any headphone yet, but I could actually do that with the Atrium. No, I um, honestly, I prefer the low gain. I can't tell you why exactly I didn't like the high gain. I just something just didn't sound quite as good as low gain with the uh, atrium. And then, you know, as far as, like I said, going to balanced or single ended, I was fine with either. I'll probably stay with balance uh, for the most part, just because, you know, a lot of my headphone options are balanced. I was kind of hoping I'd get a little more warmth or low end on the atrium with single ended and I did not. So that's why I'm good with either or when it comes to the power for that. So then, I also have the IFI Go Bar. Now, I was really curious on this one, so I actually listened to that just the other day on the Go Bar, and it powers the atrium. I mean, it does have good power for a dongle DAC amp solution, uh, but I will say, you know, you do lose out on details. It's not quite as clear. It shouldn't be, quite honestly, for a dongle DAC amp on such a, you know, more demanding headphone but it powers it. Now, I did use the X base, again, hoping for that extra bit of bass. Didn't quite do it for me uh, with the Go Bar. Uh, that's not to say you can't EQ some bass. And then I also did uh, try out the X base. The X base just, you know, did nothing for me either. So I could listen on the Go Bar. In fact, I just laid in bed and chilled out to some music for a while and it was pretty good. Now there were some tracks that were a little hot on the treble with the Go Bar, which I found was interesting with the Atrium that I didn't experience on my shit stack. So Zach does tell you when you buy his ZMFs that you need to experience different amps, try different things out and see what you think. So to give you guys a spoiler alert here, I now have a bottlehead crack. I have to build it. So it's gonna take me some time when I do, I have been told to try that out on the Atrium and with ZMFs and I can't wait to do that. All right, so to kind of wrap things up, all in general, I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with the Atrium. Is it the best headphone I've ever heard? No, but here's the thing. For $2,500, somebody could look from the outside and say, that better be the best headphone you've ever heard. Uh, I disagree. I mean, this hobby is, if you get into this hobby the way I have, you want to experience different things. And I love the experience I've gotten with the ZMF Atrium. Um, ZMF as a company is, you know, I fully back that company for everything that Zach's doing. He's a super cool dude, reaches out to you, you know, he'll check in on you, see how you're enjoying uh, the headphone, you know, things that you need. I've shot him some emails. He's been able to answer when he can, he's a busy guy. But the company itself, just for what they stand for, it is an experience, guys. I mean, I have watched the videos of ZMF. I've looked at the different things that he recommends doing over time as you own them. I'm buying, you know, the, uh, you know, the wood cleaner finish that he recommends. Um, you know, if you look on the ZMF in general, you're going to see different screws and things around there that these are not complicated screws, you know, around the yokes, around the gimbal, all the different adjustments, you know, the headband and things that you can do to adjust things. I have a iFixit set. I would highly recommend if you don't have one of those or something similar to get it because um, it is gonna work with my atrium so that I can adjust and fine tune things over time. You know, if adjustment falls out or it kind of loosens up, I can tighten them back up. Some people may look at that and say, this is a $2,500 headphone. 
my God, why would you need to do that? And I look at it just the opposite and say, this is a handcrafted, handmade headphone. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to maintain that over time. And that's the experience you get with ZMF. And that is why I am interested in trying out more ZMFs, which I will in future videos that you guys will see. So when I tell you guys that this is not the best headphone I have ever heard yet, I haven't tried it with a ton of different amps. And you know, some may think, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, any amp's gonna sound the same, but you know, as much as I've heard about how tubes can sound with this, let's just wait and see on that. You know, that's gonna be a fun flavored sound. I just, I can't wait to experience that. And I'll tell you guys this, when I was at Can Jam, I listened to the Auteur Classic, okay? And I also listened to the Verite Opens, but I listened to them on the Cayenne, I'm sorry if it's, uh, it's escaping me right now, but it's the tube amp that uh, ZMF had there and that amp sounded so good on those headphones. It was just a smooth listen. And I have not gotten that yet from the Atrium. I've gotten a very good listen out of it. Uh, the shit stack kind of makes me stand up in my seat and really listen and pay attention to music, whereas the tube is more of a, you know, I'm just gonna relax and you know, now I wanna buy a turntable and throw on some records and just chill out to my music. And maybe have some whiskey and do some sipping and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's really, really cool. And that's the experience I want to get from the ZMF. So I got a ways to go with this one, guys. And I will do future video updates on that. So this has been a long-winded impressions, review, whichever way you want to call that. This is me talking to you guys about my experience with the ZMF and how much fun I've had with this and how much more fun I'm going to continue to have with the atriums going forward. So with that, I will let you guys get back to doing whatever it is that you're doing. I'm going to get back to listening to this with some whiskey, sitting back. Actually, now I'm gonna be building my bottlehead crack. I gotta learn how to solder, by the way. All right, see you in the next one. <laughs> I got it. I got the ZMF. I got the atrium. Ah.